Hello, welcome once again to Stuff and Things, where I like to talk about stuff and occasionally even things. I'm your good friend Bradley, and today I have a tobacco review for you, and the tobacco which I will be reviewing is this. It is Peterson Sherlock Holmes, once again an oft-requested blend. Many people have asked for me to review this blend on the channel, and I am going to do so now. As I mentioned, the blend is Peterson Sherlock Holmes. It is produced by the Scandinavian Tobacco Group. It is available at smokingpipes.com. They have a 16 ounce bag, one pound for $56. They have a 50 gram, 1.76 ounce tin like this for $9. But then Pipes and Cigars also has the 16 ounce bag. They have it for $55.99. The 50 gram tin is $8.99. And then they also sell it by the ounce. So $4 an ounce as of the recording of this video. And then Four Noggins has the 50 gram tin for $9.05. The tin description, we shall read it here, short and sweet. <clears throat> a Virginia and Burley Leaf blend of great character with a sweet taste and aromatic aroma. Fairly short, but then we also have something from the Peterson website here, peterson.ie. This mixture is made from an old Irish recipe dating back to 1880 and is one of the finest tobaccos smoked in the time of Sherlock Holmes. The straight Virginia blend possesses all the natural flavor and aroma associated with premier Virginia tobaccos. Um, I'm going to take their word that it's a tobacco that would have been smoked in the time of Sherlock Holmes and that it is a recipe dating back to 1880. I have no idea. I wasn't around back there. Truth be told, Sherlock Holmes wasn't around back then either. But anyway, we'll take that for what it is. They call it a straight Virginia here. Um, I've heard some people describe this blend as a Weber, a Virginia Burley blend, and even though it does contain some Burleys, I would still pretty much call it a Virginia blend. The Virginia definitely predominate, predominates, dominates the flavor. We'll go with that. The blend type, as I've just been describing, I'm going to call it a Virginia blend, but it does have a bit of Burley and there is a bit of topping. It's not enough topping for me to call this a distinctly aromatic blend, but we'll get into that later. And the blend contains a variety of different Virginias. There's some reds, there's some Indian Mysore Virginias, and then Brazilian Burley. So let's get to the vital stats here. Have them written down right here. Flavoring, there's a citrus fruit flavoring. Fairly mild, but it is there and you do notice it. The cut is a ribbon and I'll show you that right now. Sherlock Holmes by Peterson of Dublin. Tin art, meh. I really wish they would have kept the old tin art that they used to have. I think it was much more attractive. But anyway, crack this baby open, take a look at the cut. We have a pretty standard ribbon cut. And this tobacco was wet, 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 wet when I got it. It's dried out a little bit, but I still need to take some out and dry it out usually before I do a bowl. It's still not quite at the proper moisture content. But you can see there, it is a blend of Virginias, some reds, some Indian Virginias, and a little bit of burley. Pretty attractive. And when dried properly, it packs well, lights well, burns well. All that good stuff. All right, back to the vital stats. The strength, the mouthfeel, the perceived oomph of this blend, I'm going to give a mild medium. The taste, I am also going to give mild. It's a pretty delicate blend, not insanely robust. And the nicotine level, I'm going to give medium low. Even though it's pretty much a straight Virginia and there's some burley in there and everything, it's not a really high nicotine content and it's on the lower end of medium. And then moisture from tin was a drowned rat on this one. It was really wet when I cracked my tin open. And then the packaging, as I mentioned, you can find a 16 ounce bag, you can find 50 gram tins, and you can find it in bulk in some places as well, sold by the ounce. So now let's get into the tin note. Mm, we'll crack this baby open and I will shove my nose inside the tin. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Well, it's a pretty mild odor, mild aroma. Um, there is a little bit of that light, bright Virginia smell, but it's mostly more on the red Virginia spectrum, and that's going to be a common thing for me to say throughout this review. It's not really high and grassy, more of that 
kind of sweet, nice red Virginia flavor or smell. And then there's a hint of vanilla in this as well. Actually, the, now that I'm smelling it, it's more than a hint. I guess it varies. Because when I was kind of writing down my notes about the aroma before, I said a hint of vanilla. Now I'm getting a pretty good, good waft of vanilla coming up. And then there's a fruity, citrusy, lemony, limey kind of smell. And that's obviously the topping. Not extremely strong, but you definitely notice it there. And then the room note on this one, it's pretty light, pretty mild. I don't think a non-smoker is gonna be too offended by the smell of this tobacco, and I don't think it lingers too long. But of course, your mileage may vary depending upon the important people in your life and what they think of tobacco smoke. So now let's get to the actual review here. I have, oh, about two thirds of this bowl left. Let's get it lit up. All right, right off the bat, let's talk about the mechanics a little bit. As I mentioned when I showed you the cut and when I talked about the moisture content of this blend, my particular tin came really wet. Not necessarily always going to be the case when you buy this tobacco, but for me at least it was very wet. And if you smoke this tobacco wet, it will bite you. If you smoke this hot and fast, it will bite you. So this is a blend that you definitely need to make sure is at the proper moisture content and you need to take it slow. You need to sip it, you need to take your time. Now, those of you who have seen some of my other reviews will probably know that I'm not a huge fan of aromatic tobaccos. In fact, I really do not like aromatic tobaccos, tobaccos that have had an obvious flavoring added to the blend in a topping form. Um, and I've reviewed a few tobaccos that are kind of mild aromatics because I don't like aromatic aromatics. I'm usually not likely to review those blends, but I've reviewed things like Dunhill's Royal Yacht that has kind of a little bit of a plum flavoring on there. A couple of the GLPs blends that have more of a, to uh, not tobacco, uh, an alcohol sort of topping added to the blends. And I haven't been huge fans of those. This blend, as I mentioned, it, it's more of a kind of a crossover aromatic, um, a blend that maybe someone who, like me, isn't a huge fan of aromatics, they may be able to enjoy this. And then people who are only smoking aromatics may be able to smoke this to get more of a pure tobacco flavor. It's kind of, it kind of sits in between an aromatic and a non-aromatic. And the flavoring on this one actually complements the flavor of the natural tobacco. It has a sort of citrusy fruitiness to it. And there are some Virginias that kind of naturally have that flavor profile. If you have a aromatic flavoring with just a really strong vanilla or cherry flavor or something like that thrown on top, to me, it's very jarring because I'm trying to taste tobacco. And then when you have this flavor that's so disparate from the natural tobacco flavor, it just kind of throws me off. This works better because it's something that blends in well with the natural tobacco flavor that you would be expecting. And like I said, it's not a very strong flavor, but you do notice it, it is there. So I had a little trouble developing an opinion of this blend because it is pretty mild. The first few bowls I smoked, I wasn't really getting a whole lot from it. But the more I've smoked it, the more I've come to appreciate its nuance. It starts out as a pretty mild, pretty sweet Virginia tobacco. So I get a fairly light, fairly sweet red Virginia flavor profile. I don't get much of that high, bright, grassy Virginia taste at all. And as I get down through the bowl though, there's a little bit of that burly comes through. To me, it doesn't seem like there's much in there. I don't know the proportions that are actually in the blend, but there's a little bit of nuttiness. And then that vanilla that I noticed in the tin aroma, that kind of comes through as well. But sort of binding it all together is that citrusy, fruity, topping flavor. It's not overly strong, but you do notice it. It is there, it is distinctive, but it's not overpowering. And it just kind of imparts a little bit of a refreshing zest to the blend, in my opinion. And that's saying a lot coming from someone who really usually does not like added flavoring. But this is pretty mild. If you're expecting a real flavor overload or something that's really gonna knock your socks off in the flavor department, this is not the blend for you. It's something that's best enjoyed in a very slow contemplative manner. 
you're really going to have to tease the flavors out of this one. But they are there, and I would say they're very pleasant. For this type of year, especially in the summer, when I'm recording this tobacco review, it's to me like um, when I'm super, super thirsty, sometimes I don't crave water to quench my thirst. I will crave some sort of zesty lemon-lime fruit drink. For some reason, that really seems like the thing I want when I'm thirsty, like a, a squirt or a Sprite or something like that. And this kind of rides in that area. For this time of year, if it's really hot and I don't feel like smoking a, a really heavy Latakia blend, I've talked before in the past about how vapor really hits the spot in weather like this when it's warm outside. This maybe even more so. Um, it just seems refreshing for some reason. Another analogy I can think of, if, if it's super hot, I often don't feel like a really heavy big meal. Um, and I want something very light. I might go for maybe Japanese food or something like that. And that's kind of what this tobacco is like as well. If it's super hot out, I don't want to smoke something that seems like it's going to be a meal to me. And this is something that it's very light. It's very nuanced. It's not very strong at all. You're not going to taste a lot. But what you do taste, I think, could really hit, a, hit the spot on a nice hot summer day like this. So to recap, my review of Peterson Sherlock Holmes, a mild, straight Virginia with a hint of burley and also a hint of citrus fruit flavoring added. Not enough flavoring for me to consider this a full-on aromatic, but also not enough of a pure tobacco taste for me to consider it a non-aromatic. It's a crossover blend. It would be enjoyed by many people who enjoy a straight Virginia. Don't mind a little bit of added flavoring. If you like a vapor, if you like a nice uh, zesty Virginia for a hot summer day, this could definitely be something you're into. If you're an aromatic smoker and you'd like to taste something that has a little bit more of the pure tobacco flavor spectrum in it, this could be something for you. And if you're someone who hates aromatics, but you maybe want to branch out a little bit, you're afraid of added flavoring, this one might be for you as well because it's mild enough and it matches the natural tobacco flavor enough that I don't think it's going to throw you off too badly. I've been enjoying it. I still think I would probably reach for a vapor before I would reach for this, but the more I smoke it, the more it's kind of growing on me. It is very mild. It is very nuanced. It's not something that's going to just slap you in the face with flavor, but I've been enjoying it. It's something I might try again, and I definitely think it is worth your while to give it a try as well. So thank you so much for watching this review of Peterson Sherlock Holmes. I've been your good friend Bradley. You've been the audience. This has been Stuff and Things. I'll see you later.